I see no way this could go wrong. What is up everybody? I hope you're having a wonderful day. As you can see today, we are in the kitchen again. We are clearly going to be baking and I hope you guys are happy because I brought the big guns. I have my computer sitting on the kitchen counter along with my really expensive microphone. There's no way this could go wrong, right? So I have my computer set up. I have my phone set up so I can see you guys from two different places. I think this is gonna be fun. I really just need the second one so I can film um, what I'm actually working on, what I'm gonna make. And I gotta tell you guys, I wore my Simple Plan shirt and I felt like I needed the hair and the makeup to match. And now, I have never felt imposter syndrome so strongly in my life because, yeah. This is a style I definitely used to do back in the day. We'll not say when the day was, but I loved it. I also had red bangs, so it really popped and it was really cool because the red would also get pulled up into the faux mohawk, the faux hawk as I like to call it. Anyway, enough about me, let's talk about what we're making. For today, we're gonna need two cans of the Pillsbury Crescent Rolls, or if you have rolls like this, I'm sure it would work just fine. I also have vanilla. Hopefully this is enough. If not, I have more. You will also need cream cheese, two eight ounce little things softened so I pulled it out of the fridge as I was setting everything up. Really I should have pulled it out before I started doing the hair because this took a while. As you can see I'm going to show you guys like a little clip of me trying to get this mess figured out. Also have confectioner sugar, cinnamon, and the grand old butter. How am I saying this so easily and with no issues at all? I have everything already written down in my recipe scrapbook, as you can see. It looks so good. Can't wait to print that picture and add it. I still need to print the pistachio cake picture. I'll get around to it, I promise. But because I have everything written down, it's gonna be so easy to walk through all of the steps with you guys. The first thing you want to do is turn on your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Once that is started, now we can start working on, oh, I should probably tell you what you're making. We're making cheesecake crescent rolls. This probably sounds a little weird, but uh, Nate was actually the one that found this recipe. I don't know where he found it, but when he told me about it, I said yes. I would like to try to make that. And here we are, we're gonna make it. So once you have turned on your oven to get it going, you're gonna grab a nine by 13 baking dish. It did not say to add any like spray or anything onto the pan. I don't trust that it's not going to stick. So I am going to spray it. I, I just think that's a better choice because I do not want to lose all of this hard work to the bottom of this pan. So we're just gonna not over. Here's something I want you guys to know. Don't spray over your floor. That's how you end up on the floor. Spray it over the sink. If you have sprayed it above the floor, you know what I'm talking about. So now, we're gonna take one of the two rolls. If you decide you wanna do a half version of this, totally fine, no problem at all. You will just need an eight by eight pan instead. So we're gonna unroll this first one, leave the other one alone, he didn't do anything yet. These used to pop so much easier when I was younger. What has gone wrong? There we go. If it doesn't pop immediately, just bang it a couple times. Let me get my camera in place. We're gonna unroll the first one into our pre-sprayed pan because once again, I don't trust it. If you are doing the half, you're just gonna use half of this whole roll and take the other half off to the side for later. Now, what you are going to do is you're gonna take your softened cream cheese, which I wish I could say is softened. I don't think it is. So I'm gonna talk over my phone. One thing I would recommend is adding it to where the heat comes out when you turn your oven on. At least mine does this, where it has like a little heat coming out of the top. I just put whatever needs to be melted on top of it carefully because I did that with butter and I had a puddle of butter and lost like half of it to my stove top. That was not a fun cleanup. So I would just like, you know, put it over there, let it melt down a little bit and then We'll grab a bowl and we'll start mixing all of the stuff together. I told you this one was easy. So because I have no idea how to make things so easy, I of course did not pull the bowl out until just now, but we're gonna take that bowl and we're gonna add the softened cream cheese. Get it out of the container. Oh look, 
more boxes to take it out of. Yay! Now you guys can see the behind the scenes of how creators do what they do. <laughs> this is how you get multiple views. All right, so we're gonna take the two cases of the eight ounce cream cheese, which honestly, I love cream cheese. So I was, this is honestly probably what sold me on this recipe when they said cream cheese. Not that they also said the Pillsbury Crescents because that was like my favorite breakfast when I was a kid. No. Nah. Or the sugar. The sugar would have nothing to do with this, right? So, two things of cream cheese. All right, we've got our one, now we gotta get our second. So we've got two packages of Philadelphia cream cheese into our bowl. And now we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of vanilla and a cup of powdered sugar. Once again, things I did not pull out to prepare for this video. All right, so we'll add the vanilla next. All right, there's one. Am I really, I, I might actually have it. I do not have it. Nope. Oh, how do I get that not to spill? Right there. Okay, so we gotta get the other box open now because, you know, I was prepared for this one. I felt like I was low on vanilla. I was right. I know my kitchen. Finish filling this up. Now we have our one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. I have vanilla all over my hand. Fantastic. Can't make this easy. I've never been able to make this easy. If you're not making a mess in your kitchen, you're not doing it right. That's just my opinion. All right, now we need, if you did not see this trick in my video about the chocolate chips, how to seal your bags is make sure you have a little tail. Wrap it around, put that tail through that, tighten it, you're good. You're set. You don't need to worry about getting all of those clips and fancy doodads to hold your stuff together. DIY, just DIY. All right, so I'll add a cup of powdered sugar. Add that, might have been a little bit more, but that's fine. And now we have to combine. How we combine this is honestly with a lot of patience and a lot of muscle. So we're just gonna start smushing everything down and just start stirring it all together. I'll probably speed up this part for you guys so you're not like bored out of your minds as I figure this out. into the food while you're making it. Obviously with clean hands, you're just not having fun in the kitchen. Live a little, have some fun. When you were a kid, you didn't care about making messes. Why start now? I know you have to clean the kitchen, but that's beside the point. Okay, make a little mess then, you big baby. I feel like half of the powdered sugar I'm losing to the bottom of the bowl. So I also think in this process, if you decide to use your hands instead of mixing with the fork or spoon or whatever you decided to use, I think the heat from your hands helps to thaw the uh, cream cheese a lot faster. So that might be, that might be what you do. So I'm gonna get this all off of my hands and then I'm gonna wash my hands and then we will get to putting the cream cheese mixture onto our crescent rolls. Okay, now we're gonna add this to our crescent roll layer. Hopefully this will be easy. All right, the fork's not working so well, so I'm gonna grab a spatula and uh, try to smooth it out that way. it is because this is just not working out. Whether you wanted to get messy in the kitchen, now you have no choice because no other method is working for me right now. I feel like this is gonna be one of those desserts that you bring to family and like you're gonna be the life of the party. This just already, if you've never had like a cream cheese frosting before, one, you're missing out. The two, like if you like the cream cheese frost, if you like the cream cheese frosting that I'm throwing all over my kitchen, 
you're gonna like this one. All right, so now we are going to melt down a fourth a cup of butter, which thankfully they have the measurements on the side, so I'm gonna cut it like right there. I would try to melt the butter in like 15 to 30 second increments because you don't know when it is actually gonna melt and you don't want it to kind of explode. So while we're waiting for that to melt, we are gonna take the second can of the crescent rolls and we're going to layer that on top of the cream cheese that we just added. These things do not work the same. Just pop it. Because I need these to layer on each other well, I'm gonna unroll it before I lay it down. Start there, go across. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I'm liking this. Now hopefully you guys are savvy enough in the kitchen to have like those brushes. I weirdly don't. So I'm gonna take the spatula and I'm just gonna kinda smear it as I go. So we'll add the butter. Get that all over. Thankfully it moves really well. Get the butter smeared everywhere. And now what you are going to do you're gonna sprinkle generously. I love how that is how they label this. Sprinkle generously with cinnamon and sugar. I don't know if they mean like real sugar. I think they probably do. So I'm gonna sprinkle generously with the cinnamon. I feel like that's generous enough. And now I'm gonna grab sugar and sprinkle that generously. I do feel like this was probably what you needed to do anyway. I know it didn't say sugar was needed for this recipe, but you're adding cinnamon and sugar. You're not adding cinnamon and powdered sugar. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this lovely thing, you're gonna put it in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes or until it is bubbly and lightly browned. Go figure, as soon as you sit down to have lunch, timer goes off. So I put it in for 20 minutes. That looks really good. I actually think we could take it out now. I want you to understand, I am very much right-handed. So to take this stuff out left-handed is very, I don't know. I think I'm like, I'm just playing with fate. But we got it. Okay, so it has been enough time for the treat to cool. It looks amazing, if I might add. I'm gonna sprinkle it with honey because I actually think that was like a fantastic, uh, to, hi, that's my honey. Good idea, honey. I like it. Yeah, no Thank problem. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep. Oh, yeah, just take all of it. Can I, can you actually give me the honey as well? Oh, you want that? Just put it yeah. in there. Yeah, take it. All right. Thank you. Well, yep, no problem. No. One of these days, 